This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the CEO of Moss and Gold, Mr. Ivan Fairhall, and the Executive Chairman of Moss and Gold, Mr. Michael Hudson. Gentlemen, great to have you both on today. How are you? Very good, very good. Nice to speak to you again, Gerardo. It's been a busy, busy start to 2022 for Moss and Gold. It was a very busy 2021. I want to start with you, Mike, on several news releases that you had here recently. But but I want to definitely start with the update from the 16th of February, where you provided an update to the Southern Cross Gold spin out. Um, how is that coming along? Because I understand that you're getting a pretty favorable reception right now to those assets, deservedly so, because the numbers seem to indicate, at least early on, that you could be on something pretty significant there. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll let Ivan cover the benefits for Mawson, and I'll, I'll just let you know how we're, how we're looking in terms of the spin out down here in Australia, which, which I am leading and will become the managing director of this new company called Southern Cross. Uh, on the ASX, we, we're going to be very soon to submit or lodge our prospectus to the appropriate authorities, the ASX and ASIC in, in Australia in early March. That then takes about six to eight weeks, I'm told, for those, those authorities to review the prospectus and the money to be raised, and then you're, you're, you're trading. So we, we'll probably be trading, if that's the case, somewhere in May, early May. So we are on a roll, absolutely. We're, we're flushing out all the results as quickly as we can from, from uh, our projects, because we, even though we'll keep drilling during that process after lodgement, we won't be able to assay or create any material new information. So we're really on a roll here. Um, we've got multiple discoveries that I'm sure we'll talk about in a moment. And, um, and, and this is really being seen by some as one of the better, if not the best, gold float coming to market on the ASX. Ivan, I would love to hear your take as to why that is. I mentioned the fa very favorable reception uh, that you're getting, and Mike just kind of echoed that sentiment. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Sure. Yeah, look, you know, Southern Cross is a, is a great example of value creation in, in our part of the market. You know, Mawson acquired these projects less than two years ago and utilized our in-house resources to incubate them and grow them. And, and now we have an asset of significant value uh, and that gives us the opportunity to take this next step, which is the spinning out of the company. And uh, this recent funding round that we've raised down in Australia, we've raised 2.75 million Australian dollars uh, privately into Southern Cross as a precursor to that IPO. And, and that funds us to keep drilling and, and implement the IPO, at which point that, um, we'll raise some more money. So just the just the stake, just the money that we raised today values Mawson's stake in Southern Cross at about Canadian thirteen point seven million dollars, which I'll point out it was quite remarkably is, is one third of Mawson's market cap today for a for an asset that was effectively hiding in our portfolio and, and I don't think not well understood and, and here we're seeing it um, seeing it it, it it flourish in the market and, and and that's the exact reason that we're IPOing it because there's value there that needs to be recognised. Anything to add to that, Mike? Because you know I'm going to touch on Sweden as well, where I I, I think there's significant potential for a re-rating, and I want to hear your thoughts on that, Ivan. But anything else to add to that, Michael? Well, in, in terms of the, uh, the results, just specifically, you know, we, our flagship is Sunday Creek, and we've seen, you know, what is arguably the the one of the best or it's not the best discovery to come out of Victoria over the last few years. There's lots of eyes on that project. Um, you know, we 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 put out uh, something like uh, 12 meters at 16 grams gold equivalent in the deepest hole. We've got uh, another hole to come to market over the next few weeks, which will be the deepest hole. So we're anticipating the results there. What's most in Important also is that we made another high-grade discovery at Rue. We put out 
uh, 60 centimetres at uh, just under 50 grams a tonne. That's right in the sweet spot of what they mine just down the road at Costa Field, a thin, high-grade mine, but the sixth highest-grade gold mine on earth, um, you know, over a 2 million ounce gold equivalent system at uh, Costa Field. So uh, grade is, is king, as we all say. And uh, so we've got our second project we're drilling out there. And then, of course, Mawson has made a decision uh, around around holding the stock. And, and, and Ivan, perhaps you can just touch on that. Sure. Um, look, the, the way Mawson said, the spin out is actually what creates the value. We've taken the assets, we shine a light on them, you know, we give them the fit for purpose, capital market strategy, investor base, dedicated board and management team, and, and this funding, dedicated funding through the pre-IPO and the IPO, for which to go and execute on that strategy. So, the IPO, in fact, is just the beginning and, and, and this quality discoveries. And when we compare them to the peers down there, Mike mentioned, you know, one of the best uh, gold discoveries and, and one of the nicest gold IPOs being said by some, you know, we see huge upside following that. And uh, as the story takes hold down under and and uh, those people who are hungry for a piece of the Victorian Renaissance, which in fact, it was the Canadians who, who carved out originally. So it was that that actually you know, led us to look at our portfolio and to make the decision to hold on to the shares. Um, and uh, that provides huge op- optionality for Mawson as part of its sort of portfolio of assets. You know, we have this asset that can sig- of significant value that we can fund, uh, use to fund Raya plot in the future in a non-dilutive way. Um, it provides look-through value in the intervening period and, and it'll strengthen Mark- uh, Mawson's market cap presence to help attract and hold those important institutional investors who, who we have already have on our register. Um, and uh, your future distribution is possible post the hold period, um, which is 24 months from the IPO, we can distribute all or a partial stake um, to shareholders. And, and again, it just adds to that optionality. And of course, having a tight structure down at Southern Cross, reducing that overhang of certain shareholders who might look to just sell those shares when they get them distributed, um, that'll be really important for Southern Cross in its formative years to really hit its straps and and therefore by 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 holding those shares together we will in fact help generate more value for all shareholders to keep more Southern Cross capital structure tight of which obviously we will own a 58% um, shareholding in so approximately 58% depending on how much is raised at the IPO so um, and finally. Not to, not to want to leave too many reasons to do it, but um, it will be a strategic stake. And uh, we all know that, that uh, you know, if Southern Cross does what we hope it will, um, holding on to a large stake in that provides real additional value in terms of um, uh, having some sort of control type premium associated. So that should hopefully generate additional value again for more some shareholders. Uh, you, you said the word value several times there. I have to ask about Sweden. You commenced an 8,000 meter regional diamond drill program back in mid-January. How is that coming along? Yeah, yeah, great. We're up there drilling at the moment and, and we're looking for results to sort of flow in as they tend to over the winter period. Um, and, you know, we're super busy up there in our preparations for our economic studies as well. We're, we're just kicking off metallurgical test work programs and speaking to various consultants and uh, and looking how we deliver that over over this year. I won't be too definitive on timing, but um, yeah, certainly things are heading in the right direction, moving that project forward. Mr. Hudson, anything to add to that? Well, just to you ask the question and uh, the Swedish asset specifically, uh, Ivan will be drilled over the coming months, right? Which is very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. And look, let me be absolutely clear. I'm, I'm, I'm a biased uh, supporter of the, the stock and the company. I think the current valuation is a gift. I think we're entering a period where we're going to have a very, very exciting gold market and, and one that we haven't seen for at least a year and a half during this long and, you know, let's be frank, painful consolidation, which kind of coincided with uh, tax law selling here at the end of December. That I think is behind us. And I think that's the opportunity here. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Anything to add to that from either of you? It's just crazy, right? Uh, where, where our valuation is. We've got a million ounces up in 
uh, Finland. We're drilling regional targets. We've got a brand new virgin discovery in the shadow of head frames in Sweden. Mawson will be the major strategic holder of what will be one of the hottest gold floats on the ASX and will rep provide amazing look through value that uh, that you'll see come to the table. And um, and we're in a, in a we're in a great gold market, so we're having fun. Absolutely, yeah. Lots of value catalysts to come this year. Excited for 2022. A lot, a lot to get done. I'll let you gentlemen get to it. Thank you so much for the time today. Love the enthusiasm. And again, look forward to chatting soon. Thanks, Roderick.